Santa Gold Spirituals album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Santa Gold, Philly based artist, singer, songwriter. She has been a cult favorite of many over the years, including myself. Back in the day, her self titled debut album, I'm gonna just come out and say it, I don't think it gets enough credit. This was a wildly eclectic and electric debut album that had her dubbing into, let's see, the long list of genres on this album, from new wave to indie pop to regular pop to indie rock to dub to reggae, electronic music as well. But as bloated as this album was, as far as the genre-wise go, uh, I think she really evened it out with really electric performances and incredible chorus. My only problem with it is that I feel like she didn't really you know, follow it up in a w good way. Master of My Make Believe came out a few years later and I've always thought that it really didn't match up to her debut album. Yes, uh, there are some really good singles on there, but most of this album compared to where she was just seemed, you know, really just big letdown. It felt like she was playing it safe in the glossier production. No thank you. And the last time we heard from her was way back in 2016 with 99 cents. And honestly, I liked the album then and I still do. I mean, if we're being honest, uh, it's not as groundbreaking as her debut, and as far as the shift in genres, we've moved away from that, but it was a very colorful, a very likable indie pop album at the end of the day. Now, we've not heard from Santa Gold in quite some time, and I didn't really know what to expect with this album, but to my surprise, I actually liked a lot of the singles leading up to this album, and truth be told, this is the fa this is easily, easily my favorite thing from Santa Gold in a really long time. This album starts off with my horror, and honestly, I really love this as an intro. It's bubbly, it's sweet and cute, but it has a strong message behind it, much like I could say for most of this album. It's a very personal, very uh, tormented album, if you will. And this really does show uh, oh, Santa Gold really diving into some very personal, close-to-home topics. It doesn't overstay its welcome, but it's really catchy, and it does a really great job of bringing in the sounds of where she's at right now. Then we have nothing, and much like a lot of albums in Santa Gold's discography, the sound doesn't sit still. It doesn't really sit with a you know particular sound for very long, and this track is no different. This is a much more calculating, grim, sort of hip-hop-infused tune, but I really love it. It's not as upbeat or, you know, explosive, but it's much more gritty and real sounding. But it's also really mesmerizing, like you can't look away. It's really cool. High Priestess, on the other hand, is much more upbeat and streamlined, and Santa Gold's performance on here is mesmerizing. The bumping production is really great, too. As far as a throwback, old-school Santa Gold sounding tune, look no further. But it has a shocking amount of tension, mostly due to the very campy synths. At the end of the day, this is a very ghoulish album. And for me, Ushers of the New World, I think it's my favorite track here. Here. This is a track is mesmerizing. It is a haunting tune that is wonderfully weird. But Santa Gold sounds so in charge of her sound here. She sounds like a damn prophet and, you know, sort of just screaming out from this, you know, very campy, sort of over-the-top indie pop tune. Now, this is still a slower-paced track. This is far from the colorful blast of her debut album. But I think this album as a whole is easily some of her most memorable in a really long time. Oh dear goodness though, some of the blemishes on this album, there's not that many, but the few that are here are pretty awful. Like, take for example Shake, this was one of the singles leading up to this album, almost made me not review it. This is tough to sit through, and that's coming from the easily the shortest track here too. But the vocal inflections, the lack of an interesting instrumental, and the sheer annoyingness of this track is awful. The lasty isn't that much better either. This is a weird, out of place funeral dirge of a tune. And listen, a lot of this album has been very haunting, very ghoulish at times, but this track just does not fit. And full first as a finale, it's not the worst thing here. There's actually a lot of good to it. I actually really love the instrumental here. It's this interesting sort of crossroads between a rigid post-punk track and a dancey new wave single. But the production here is sloppy, and most importantly, Santa Gold doesn't sound like she's up to a track like this. It's not terrible, it's just not great, but a lot of the rest of the album is very good. No Paradise, I think this track is great. I needed this so badly. This is a warm, hip-hop influenced track with a big chorus, some warm rhythms. If you're a fan of her early stuff, like her debut album, give this a shot because this is good. Witness is really good too. I love the campy synths on this track that literally sound like they were ripped kicking and screaming out of the original Suspiria soundtrack. 
But I love that. It takes the very stark personal themes of this album and makes them human. And I love her performance on this track. It's once again very meditative. And I really adore Ain't Ready. This is the most overtly dark and dare I say heaviest track here. But this is still obviously a Santa Gold track. It's got that big hook, the kind that she could pull out in her early days, and also much like her early days, it's still, you know, while dark and heavy and a little bit more streamlined, still pulls from a lot of different genres. And this track just really does a great job of kind of tying the bow and, you know, ending up any loose ends of the personal themes of this album. This album's pretty darn good, especially because I haven't loved a Santa Gold record in quite some time, but the personal themes on this album, the very focused nature of it, her electric performances are all really good. And yes, it's very short, and because of that, the blemishes here are really, really, really standing out. Still, I think this is one of her best works in a while, and I do really enjoy this album. I have no issue at all giving this album a strong 7, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.